Rutherford, the first album by Mike Rutherford, and then Mike Oldfield, who I'm, I admire too a lot. Yes. Yeah. You have any special memories about those two oh, people? Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you a little uh, side story to that. In 1976, I was at the Manor Studios. We had just we were just wrapping up recording House Tricks with Jack Bruce, and I got a call from Phil Collins, and Phil asked me if I want to join Genesis. <laughs> oh, went, wow. Okay. Uh, and I said, Phil. Now, but I have to proceed this by I wasn't a huge Genesis fan at that time I became a big fan after but funny enough at that, that time 76 it wasn't really quite what I was into at the time but very honored to to be asked but uh, I had to decline because I had just signed a, a recording contract with um, Robert Stigwood um, with Jack with the Jack Bruce band so we were actually a band and we were going to go out on the road the next year. So I was actually already committed. And I said, but Phil, thank you. Thank you for asking. He said, well, listen, how about would you fill in for me for Brand X while I rehearse with Genesis in January? And I went, absolutely, because I knew the guys from Brand X. So we were rehearsing in this place called The Farmyard uh, just outside of London owned by Trevor Murray, who used to be the drummer of the Peddlers. And I was in one room with my Ludwig Octoplus kit playing with Brand X. Genesis were in the other room with Chester Thompson, because after he called me, he then called Chester, with his Octoplus, his Ludwig Octoplus, and Phil's Gretsch kit. And, and uh, that was it. Two of Phil's bands were playing simultaneously. Different music, of course. You know, so that was the that was the little connection uh, with Genesis, um, and actually I was invited to their first show in London with Chester, so that that, that was great. Um, now back in those days, Steve Hackett was still playing in the band too. You know, um, and then that was seventy. Okay, so seventy six, seventy seven. They were they went out on that tour, um, and then in seventy end of seventy eight. I got contacted by Mike Rutherford and went down to his house and uh, met him, hung out, listened to the music. And then we recorded Small Creeps Day in Poland, in uh, Stockholm, in around, I want to say, April or May of 79. And a wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Really enjoyed that. Uh, it was a great album. You, you didn't go on tour with Mike, did you? No, no, no. no. No, okay. I was always, it's funny, I, I always seem to have been, well, at that point, I was touring with Jeff Beck and Stanley Clark, so wasn't able to, to do any. I don't think he went out on the road with his own project until a few years later, though, uh -huh. Mike and the Mechanics. Well, I think that was much later. It might be curious to you. We just had a conversation last week with uh, Steve Hackett, who's a very nice, interesting man. He's very talk. Uh, yeah, it's very outgoing. He has so many yeah. stories to tell. And we're eventually going to have to, a conversation with uh, Anthony Phillips with that, which is uh, quite unusual to, right. to have the chance to reach the, uh, the guy, I guess. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anthony, and, lovely. Absolutely lovely, man. We had, we had a lot of fun on that record. And, and, of course, I worked with Anthony again with a band called Camel. So he was involved with that uh, uh, probably about a year later. Uh, no, yeah. a couple of years later. I think that was 83. Yeah. Yeah, we did. We did have the chance to see Camel here live in Chile. Very, very rare occasion with uh, Andy Latimer. Yeah, they are such a great band too. Yeah. And what about but what about uh, Mr. Mike Oldfield, uh, Simon? Right. So now Mike, um, he had been trying to get me to play on something for about a year, and I remember a call I had with Richard Branson, who thought that well, if I call him, he'll be able to do he'll do the session. So I was at Nomis Rehearsal Studios, probably rehearsing with uh, Jeff Beck, actually, it would have been. And I had to, I was leaving for the, the States like the next day or something. And Richard was on the phone and said, can you come and do a session with Mike Oldfield on Saturday, whatever it was. I said, Richard, I'd, I'd love to. And that's, you know, very, you know, thank you for calling me, but I'm going to be in the US. I'm leaving tomorrow. <laughs> 
And he said, well, can't you leave later? <laughs> I said, no. <laughs> so funny, you know. So that was the, the beginning of that. And then about a year later, I met, um, uh, I met Mike, actually, in New York City. I was playing with Al Demiola in 1982. And then um, eventually we managed to get together for an album called Crises, which I started playing drums on. But he noticed that um, I was very, let's say, studio friendly and equipment friendly and uh, worked great with his engineer and they got a great sound. And, um, and that was really the first time that I was given a chance to become an engineer. It was all Mike. It was Mike's fault, really. And what he did was he, we had a phone conversation after I'd recorded all the, the music. And he called me, he said, so what are you up to? And I said, well, I'm doing a bit of this, a bit of that. Um, I'm actually producing an artist at the moment. He said, oh, he says, you, you produce. I said, well, I, I'm starting to produce. It's something I really want to do. He said, how would you like to produce me? <laughs> and I went, uh, wow. Okay, he said, right. And uh, let's, uh, let's do a trial week. So a week later, I drove down there and uh, I was staying in a hotel because I lived outside of London back then. And we started working together. Uh, I got an engineer from Air Studios because he has a, a Neve uh, 8108. And uh, so I needed somebody who was used to working on Air, uh, Neve consoles. Um, we did one day. And... That went okay. And then the next day I turned up, no engineer. And I said, where's so-and-so? I don't remember. It might have been Colin, actually. Where is Colin? He said, oh, I fired him. Oh. <laughs> and then he came, he walked out the room, came back with the Neve manual, which is about six inches thick, plonked it on the desk and said, I'll be back in three hours. <laughs> so... I opened and I started reading the Neve manual and he came back in three hours and I was going, oh no, this is, I mean, it's always something I've wanted to do. And I had a pretty good idea of signal flow. I know what happens from the microphone, but operating stuff like that is, is a whole different thing. And he said, right, let's do some acoustic guitar. He goes out into the live room, puts his headphones on. And he's got a mic all set up, ready to go. And, and I'm, I, I mean, I barely even know how to unmute the monitors, you know. As I turn those up, I'm looking for something that moves, anything that moves, a meter. And I see a compressor, it's a, it's a URI 1176, and it's doing this. Well, it can only do that if it's getting signal. And I thought, ah, there it is. And I look at the number on it. I go, right, I go up to the patch bay, and I... Ah, right, here we go, all dynamics, all the compressors, you know, noise gates, right? One, two, three, that must be it. And I see that it's already patched up, and I'm following it. Oh, it's coming into channel 18. Uh, I don't know if it was channel 18, I'm just picking. And I, oh, right, okay, and then I have to route, that it was a digital routing console, which, you know, not many people had seen in those days. But he'd already given me kind of a, a rough guide, and eventually managed to do that, got to the tape machine, on the track and all of a sudden bling there's a guitar and i see a meter moving wow talk back mike yes have you got a sound yet i said yeah yeah it's a, it's all happening I said how's your headphones he said yeah okay we're on the tape <laughs> oh. i mean it was yeah it was baptism by fire and uh, but you know he i have to give him credit to just thank you mike for for giving me that opportunity he knew he always preferred to have a musician engineering because he he i don't know it's just a i think he feels more comfortable he's often engineered most of his own albums but he just wanted to get away from it he's done it so many times also he had done it so much he wanted somebody else now he found somebody who he thought might be just the 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 right kind of match and that was it. I did the I did the week, and um, then I was invited back, and we worked for the next two months, f uh, finishing off crises. 
Fantastic. So that was Mike Oldfield. I have a lot to, to thank him for. Um, plus, we went on the road. We performed. Um, we did the Crisis album. We did another album with him, Discovery. We did all. I mean, it was it was a wonderful, wonderful um, apprenticeship. It really was. Absolutely great. Uh, now, one more thing, uh, Simon. You've mentioned several influences uh, among drummers. You've mentioned, you usually mention uh, Steve Gadd, uh, Ian Pace, Tony mm -hmm. Williams. Is there any, any of them that has, uh, you feel a particular, where you got a particular uh, learning? Oh, because they are so different. Oh, I, I learned from everybody I listened to. Everybody. I stole everything. <laughs> That's how I learned. <laughs> I copied everything. Um, and I, by the way, I apply exactly the same to engineering too. I stole everything from all the engineers I work with. <laughs> um, uh, and still use certain techniques of certain engineers. Uh, Ken Scott, for example, Eddie Kramer. I've stolen a lot from the, those two guys. Uh, Elliot Shiner, I learned a lot from. Um, but drummers, yeah, I mean, um, all, all of them. You learn from, from everyone. Um, uh, uh, even some of the drummers I don't even know, but played on albums. Uh, I remember, and I keep forgetting his name. Uh, I wish I could remember his name. Um, the Billy Paul album with me and Mrs. Jones. I used to play along to that album. And as a, as a kid, trying to play that slow, that slow groove, kind of six, eight groove was one of the most difficult things to do. But I love that record. I love the sound of it. The sound of Billy Paul's voice was amazing. He, I can even remember the echo on it right now, the reverb and the pre-delay and everything. Little did I know that Anthony Jackson was playing on that, that, that record. And of course, I've done a lot of different records with, with Anthony. And, um, and the drummer, Norm, Norman Farrington, that's his name. Yeah. <laughs> he ended up playing, he actually played with John Luponti too. But what a beautiful groove that was. And incredibly difficult to play as a young man. It's so slow, you just can't play that slow, you know. But it really taught me how to, how to play certain grooves, certain tempos. Uh, and it's the same with all those guys, you know. Um, uh, Chris Parker. Um, you know, uh, it, it, yeah, it's it's great. And then, of course, many years later, I meet them all and hang out with them. And that's just amazing. You know, I had Harvey Mason. He came to my studio to record one track on my drum kit because he loved the sound and he wanted it for this one particular song. He wanted to play my kit. And I was like, wow, this is so cool. And... uh um, we had a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. We talked most of the time, but he went in and he played the kit pretty much as it was. He had to put a ride song on the right-hand side, of course. But he put the hi-hat up a little bit. But basically, he's playing my drums and I'm engineering. You know, it was really bizarre, but actually great. And he told me, he told me a great story that he was in New York City and he was talking to Steve Gadd and he was just starting off and Steve Gadd said, you know, I think you should go to Los Angeles. You'll do really well over there. <laughs> In other words, I'm the New York guy. You go over there. <laughs> <laughs> so Harvey did, he went over to LA and became, you know, LA's, you know, first call drummer. You know, it was amazing. As well as Jim Keltner and Jeff Caro and all the other great drummers, Ed Green, you know, now there's the, maybe you remember Simon uh, October 2016 uh, there was a, a show that was cancelled that was going to take place uh, with Iromi Uehara and with you and Anthony Jackson and she came she came by herself in the end I don't know if you yes. remember what happened that time you were coming to play in Santiago I know that was a very sad uh, very, very sad time actually oh. um, within the space of just a couple of weeks uh, Hiromi lost a band um, I got sick and Anthony got sick. Um, <laughs> there is a there is a kind of comical side to this. <laughs> um, we're playing this ridiculous music, high energy music, 
and then turning up at the airport with two wheelchairs. One for me, one for Anthony. <laughs> and Hiromi's pushing Anthony and Mario, our sound engineer, is pushing me. <laughs> and we're flying to the next gig and we're both really <clears throat> not doing well at all. But, you know, we get on the plane and, and we get to the next place and we have two wheelchairs at the other end and get us into a car, get us into the hotel and I go to bed for a bit and then get up and have to do the, 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 the gig. And it was, it was, yeah, I was in a lot of pain. Um, I just had to get up onto the drum kit and stay there. And we had to shorten the set a little bit. I mean, I just couldn't, you know, but we still, we did it. We both played, um, but it got to a stage where we couldn't continue. I actually had to go into hospital. Uh, and then Anthony uh, was taken to hospital in, in Italy as well. So, Sadly, we had to cancel the last two shows of the European tour and thereafter our South American trip. And it was a real shame because I was so looking forward to to coming down to, to Chile again. Um, yeah, it, it was a great shame. And actually, that was the end of the, the trio with uh, with Anthony. We did some we did do a few shows after that with um, uh, with Jimmy Johnson playing bass. And also with uh, uh, Hadrian Farode. Um And they were great. They were fantastic. Um, but of course, it wasn't the trio. You know, Hiromi wrote that music for Anthony and myself. So it was very, very sad. Um, but I will say, because I think people, people might be wanting to know, Anthony is doing very well. Yeah. Um, he's in assisted living. So he's getting really well taken care of. And uh, I spoke to him not too long ago and, and on, on Zoom, and he looked great. He was in great spirits, laughing, and, and he's playing. He's playing his bass. So I, I'm really hoping that he's going to be able to uh, come out and play again. I really do. It was mm -hmm. a beautiful uh, uh, adventure, that was. Um, Simon, let me... Um, how much... Time do we have? I, I mean, we well, can go for. You have another ten minutes or so. Or? Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, yeah, we'll fifteen yeah. will be fine. Yeah. Thank you. I pre appreciate it. Um, I was I was thinking about what you say about all the people that you have played and all the adventures you have have and 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 memories. Do you have like an autobiography? Have you? <laughs> I mean, that need to be captured somewhere, man. I, that, I mean, you you were. I started writing it. Oh, over 10 years ago, maybe 12 years ago when I was on the road with Toto because we would be traveling uh, many hours by bus all over Europe and I just thought I need to do something with this time. I'm so fed up of watching movies on the bus and <laughs> so I started writing. Um, I stopped um, but I'm back to uh, archiving. Well, see, now the problem is, <laughs> here's the problem. Um, some of, uh, my diaries survived, uh, because, uh, my partner at the time was able to grab a few things, but a lot of the stuff was gone. So I'm having to delve into my computer to try to piece together, uh, using just various, uh, documents that I've uh, had on the computer since I had a Mac, which was when I moved to the States. So since 93, really, um, and I'm trying to piece together all of my sessions, all of my tours and clinics. And at the moment, I'm up to 1996. Now, there's a few question marks in there because, you know, some of the stuff I just didn't write down. But I've got most of it. So that's helping me recall um, memories and, and scenarios and stories. So I have started, but it's a, it's a big work. It's a big work, but it's, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm already doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad. Yeah. I mean, I hope, um, I'm great that you can recollect all the stuff and I hope, hoping that you can find all these records, pictures and on that computer or others. And I'm quite sure, you know, it's, it's in more. the fire, you lost a lot of stuff. So. Well, you see, people are being fantastic. People are sending me stuff from yeah, all so, over yeah. the world, pictures that I didn't even know existed. 
uh, just all sorts of things. People have already sent me uh, records, you know, vinyl records. So, you know, so I've got, you know, some little bits and pieces. Um, so I'm kind of gaining information that way, you know. And, of course, the Internet. The Internet's an amazing thing. Um, I'm finding out about gigs that were played. I didn't know the dates of. And you go online, you put the name of the band in, and you go, oh, wow, there's our tour dates, you know. It's great. Now I've got those. So that that's really what it is, you know. Gotcha. After, uh, you know, in two, 2014, after playing, doing your own thing and playing with Toto, uh, 22 years or so. Uh, I'm quite sure we doing this 22 years. There were new members. Unfortunately, people have died. New members that you may get along well, or you didn't get along. You, when you when you signed in 1992 with Total, it's a one type of music, one type of band. And in 2014, it was something very different, right? Yes. Uh, do you 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 it's not that one day you decide but right? you reach a point where you say man this, this is not working out and and you decided well i'm producer thing i'm doing the stuff for other people i want to play with other people i cannot want to roll that off and i want to do my own stuff what it was a, a combination of all this reason that in 214 you decided well I, i'm done i'm done here yeah well obviously uh, you stay in a band long enough you're going to go through a lot of changes personnel changes yeah. Um, we're all getting older. Uh, we know each other very well. And, you know, there are bones of contentions. There's disagreements. Uh, like you're running a business together, really. It becomes more about running the business than actually playing the music. Um, frankly, Toto really stopped in 2008. Um, and then we had a break. And then uh, Page, David Page and, and Steve Lukather uh, decided let's put together a band to do uh, some short tours to help Mike Picaro out, who was, you know, having a really rough time, um, which we did. But it was totally different. And it, the, the vibe had changed. Um, it, it, was, it was a bit strange, frankly, um, because I'd put a lot into those years. Uh, not only as a as a drummer, but as a uh, co-writer, uh, co-producer. I was engineering the albums. I mean, you know, there was an awful lot of uh, involvement. And then suddenly it's a band that uh, I'm almost in that I feel like I'm a backing musician in, you know. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a weird time. And that's when I felt, I think this is it. I think it's time to move on. Because uh, to me, it wasn't Toto anymore. Not the Toto that I joined, definitely. Mm -hmm. And it's probably the same for, for Luke as well. When he looked around the stage in 2008, he said, I don't... I mean, not that, not that he doesn't recognize anybody, but these are not the people I grew up with. And Toto was always very much a neighborhood band. You know, they went to school together. They were a garage band, you know, so and that was missing for him. And I totally understand that, you know, so um, and we were having a lot of differences at the time. So I felt, yeah, it was now time to move on. Uh, it was being in a band. There's a lot of commitment and it stops you doing other things. I was running a commercial studio and really trying to make that work. Very difficult when I kept having to leave to go on tour. You know, plus the Hiromi um project had started which was just wonderful and it was a breath of fresh air uh and i wanted to be able to concentrate on that so um i that's, that was it i just said you know what i think i think it's time yeah wow uh by the way we i, I email uh steve look at here as well and uh hopefully he will reply back and um well, we would love to have him on here yeah, on this yeah. show as well you know great Right. You you still talk to him? You guys get along well, oh, right? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, we spoke actually not long ago, um, yeah. and uh, we had a great chat. No, it, it, it's all cool. It's all it's all good. I spoke to uh, Steve Picaro just recently. Uh, I did a track on Joseph Williams' uh, new album, and uh, and David Page and I we exchange little texts uh, occasionally. I usually bump into him at a concert somewhere. So no, we we, we still we have a lot of history. You know, 
lot of history. Yeah. Well, go, go ahead, Christian. Okay, thank you for the time, Simon. Uh, I'd like to, uh, to have some recollection on your part about 801 Live, remember, with the film Manzanera and Eno. Brian Eno? Yeah. Long time ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The only, it's so funny because I was looking at those dates, uh, 1976, in my diaries, because that is a diary I do have. Um, mm -hmm. 1976 was probably my busiest studio year. I have three pages of sessions. It's <laughs> stunning. I, d I didn't even count them up, but uh, it's a hundred over. A, it's, I, I just, it's a couple of hundred. Um, it's uh, uh, so that was a very busy year. Yet managed to find time to rehearse um, with the band for on and off for a couple of months, and then we only ever played three shows. <laughs> we played the Pavilion West Ronton Cromer <laughs> in in East Anglia. We played Reading Festival, Jazz and Blues Festival, and we played the Queen Elizabeth Hall in London, and that's where 801 Live was recorded. And that was it. We never played again. It was a shame. Yeah, well. Especially because uh, you sometimes uh, get into adventures with people you never thought you would, and then uh, in other cases that you might li even like a musician, you, you never do some anything again with them. It's like a, exactly. yeah. yeah, yeah. It was a one-off thing. We uh, Phil wanted to. Uh, I remember when I just moved to the states, we had spoken, and he said, "I want I want to do 801 uh, Cuba." He wanted to take uh, 801 to Cuba, and I said, "Count me in. I'd love to do that." But it just it just didn't come together, sadly. Now about uh, Derek Sherinian, you've been working with. Uh, I think he's he's, uh, he's made some amazing music. And um, yeah. Protocol, those are two names I'd like you to expand on a little bit. Derek Sherinian and Protocol. Well, Derek, we have just uh, released a new record, and um, it's uh, called The Phoenix, and it's receiving rave reviews. Uh, Derek and I have a wonderful chemistry. We hadn't actually written music for about nine years. And he called me up last year and he said, I'm going to do a solo album. He said, would you be up for doing it? I want you to co-write it, play, engineer, mix the record. And I went, why not? Let's do it. And I said, let's get together and let's see what happens. And you know, it was funny. Um, we were so productive that day. We just have a great chemistry when it comes to music. I don't know what it is. It's just we work great together as, as co-composers. So it's a wonderful um, marriage, actually, from that point of view. And um, then we went into, I went into the local studio here, recorded all my tracks, and sent him on his way with all the sessions, sent them to the all the various different musicians, because obviously we're all in lockdown. We're having to you know, record separately. So everybody's engineering their own tracks and then they send it back to me and then I then mix the record. Um, and we finished it. I'm, I think it's, I think it turned out really well. Um, and I think people are going to really like it. Yeah. Yeah. For some, some snippets I've seen on the, on the internet, it's absolutely amazing. It's so powerful. It's a, yeah. such a tight sound. It's really yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh -huh. I went for a very, uh, um, it, even though it's all recorded digitally, it still has quite an analog sound to it. But that's just the way I, you know, I grew up engineering mm -hmm. with a tape machine. So mm -hmm. it, it, it's just, I don't know what it is. It's just the way you hear things and it's the perspective you put them in. And, um, but it's a, yeah, it's a pretty, and I think it's a pretty thick analog -y sounding record, you know? It is. And, and what about pro, yeah. sorry, sorry. Go I'm ahead. Getting the vinyl version. Ah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what about Protocol? I was also amazed. I have to confess that I I, I wasn't too familiar with the band Protocol, right. and it was really yeah yeah. Well, that's my that's my pet project. That's my solo project, and uh, we're up to we just did uh, Protocol Four, which was uh, we recorded in uh, 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, slight change in band members. Greg Howe took over from Andy Timmons on guitar. And uh, Dennis, uh, um, Dennis Ham took over from Steve Weingart on keyboards, um, and then for the live band, Otmar Ruiz 
came in and replaced Dennis because Dennis was already playing with uh, Thundercat. Um, and that's uh, that. Well, that album went out for a Grammy. It got nominated for a Grammy. So it's done, done very well. Um, there's a live album which is out now. It's uh, vinyl only, recorded analog, uh, with video. There's all videos all on the internet too of each song. Um, there's another one in the can with the new band, which is uh, uh, Protocol 30, because that's a 30th anniversary of, uh, of Protocol, really. Um, and I'm writing music now for Protocol 5. So I hope to be in the studio next year uh, recording it. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. On the website, I noticed that there is a CD, six CD box set. And uh, I look in Amazon, I look in eBay, I look at other famous places. Nobody has a stuff, man. You People are buying that like a hot cake. You need to do another, you know, maybe <laughs> two or maybe four. Well, I, I did. I did a second uh, uh, pressing of it. Um, yeah. It's an incredibly expensive thing to do. You know, it's a, it's a, that's a lot of six CDs, the printing, the, the manufacturing of it. It's, a, it's costly. Um, the, yes, they've all sold. I think I only have two, actually. Um, <laughs> the problem is if I produce another thousand, am I going to sell them all? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be left with 876 sitting in my warehouse. <laughs> That's the problem. So I decided. I think it's probably uh, with with the advice of my distributors, you know, because they're they're smart people. They know the the business and everything. So for the moment, I think we'll just have to uh, just leave it as it is. Um, but uh, but we'll see. You know, yeah. it's, it was a fun package to put together. It was a lot of work, um, and uh, yeah. But uh, I'm very proud of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if I come across somewhere in the internet <laughs> this week or yeah. next week, whatever, I would love to send it your way and to see if you can autograph the stuff and send it oh, okay. back to me. Okay. You know, I like to, you know, get yeah. autographed stuff from items from people and stuff like that. And, okay. and some of them, uh, we uh, we will give them away on the radio. So when we broadcast the interview, we'll say, thank you for listening to Simon and, you know, the first two callers or whatever, call 15 or call caller 17, we'll give you two CDs for vinyl, autograph yeah. uh, by by the man itself, man. Yeah. And uh, I think, uh, uh, go ahead, Christian, I think you want to mm -hmm. go for the, the final questions or so. Yeah, yeah it, well, it's, it's not a question. Uh, Simon is really like I, I asking you if you mind uh, doing an ID for the station. Sure, absolutely, yeah. 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 So I'm, I just pay, paste it on your chat. I mean, can you see that? Uh, the name of the station is uh, AAM Radio. It's all about music. Uh, so my show there, can you see that? Yeah, I can see For the Time Machine on AAM Radio. Yeah, it's yeah. All the, na me. the name of the show is uh, in Spanish, La Máquina del Tiempo, which in English is uh, The Time Machine. Yep. So you may include that, but the name of the station is uh, AAM Radio. It's all about music. So you might you could invite the people to listen to the music and a conversation, do what, do whatever you want to say. It's just an invitation. A couple of versions would be fine. Okay, so uh, you're, uh, hmm, what do I say? You're listening to The Time Machine on AAM Radio. It's all about music, something like that. It's like an it's like invitation before the show goes on. Like, oh, uh, uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So uh, please tune in to The Time Machine. The Time Machine is the program? It is, yeah, it is. Yeah, okay, all right. Okay, yeah, let me try a couple. You ready? Ready. Okay. Hello, this is Simon Phillips, and please tune in to The Time Machine on AAM Radio. It's all about music. Very, very well done. <laughs> <You're okay. laughs> Excellent. And, I have my radio voice on, by the way. <laughs> nice rhythm. <laughs> and in order to benefit you as well, uh, Simon, where can people find your music? It's, you have the ability on the website to buy CDs, vinyl, T-shirts. Oh, it's, it's available. It's, a, it's, it's yeah. distributed all over the world. It's um, yeah. uh, Amazon is a very good place. Yeah. It's in record stores where there are record stores. Uh, it's on Universal uh, uh, Jazz in Japan. Um, it's distributed by Alliance Music. 
in the states, and that's uh, but it's distributed all around the world. Um, there's also a, a, a German record company. Um, oh gosh, uh, 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 I've forgotten the name. They didn't do the last record, but they did Protocol Two and Protocol Three, and they have vinyls of those two. Um, what's the name of the? Oh, I we can I, search for that. Never mind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ah, I've got, I've got a blank. Sorry, <laughs> probably because the last album wasn't released. I haven't actually had a lot of uh, contact with them. They're based in Stuttgart, so they'll carry some. But uh, but it, it's available if you you go onto the uh, Amazon, which is worldwide. They, they, it's there. Yeah. Thank you very much. I I do hope you come back to Chile someday. I would love to. Can meet you. Yeah, maybe Claudia will meet you sometime in the in the US if you play there. Well, yeah. And I, by the way, I got sent a picture. Ah, yeah. Uh, that's a friend, well, that's a drummer. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. That that is in 2004. Can you see that? Yes. Yeah. That's Juan Ricardo Valle. It's a friend of mine who's a drummer. And yeah. when you visited Channel 13 back in 2004, when you came to Viña del Mar to the festival, yeah. I think you asked him to to check his drum set. He was so amazed. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He said, "I mean, uh, he might remember him the, the, the moment he said." Yeah. Uh, so he sends well, his regards. Oh, lovely, lovely. Well, thank thank him for sending that picture. That's great. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, thank you for the time. It's been an honor, really, Simon. Really, really. Fine it's like going, it's like going to Wonderland. Really, oh, you never stop. <laughs> so many, you. so many things to to hear about. Amazing story. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's an absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me on the show. And, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Simon. That was our interview with Simon Phillips. And thank you very much for, for taking the time. Um, I hope to see you, meet you one day. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm here in Virginia, D.C. So if you end up touring or if I end up going to Los Angeles, I will try to yeah. uh, find you. And then we can get a cup of coffee or something or, or a Love beer. Or, well, let's, let's hope we can go out and play live again soon, you know? Absolutely, man. Yeah. Yeah. Great. All right, guys. Well, thank you. Very thank you very much. I appreciate it, man. Have Good a luck. great Good weekend. weekend. Thank, thank you. Okay, thank ciao. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.